Hallelujah, PRC. Welcome this morning to Praise and Worship online. It's great online because you know what? I can connect with you as I connect with the Holy Spirit. And this morning, I want to talk about refine by His fire. Bishop talked about the purification that takes place. He's been teaching on that. And Pastor has been talking about keeping your focus. This morning, I just want to tell you that the purification that we have to go through is the same purification that Jesus had to go through. Remember, if you're a believer and you're connected with Jesus, that means you're going to have to go through the fire. You're going to have to go through the tribulations, the turmoil, the things that happen, the unexplainable. But you know what? I look to the heavens and the hills, what? Where my strength comes from. I know that the world has not an answer for the things that Jesus does. We look unto our to the hills where our health comes from. We have to confidently trust in God. That means I'm believing. I'm believing in things that I can't see in. I'm believing because I know that the greater one lives in me. I'm believing because I know my healing is based upon it. I'm believing because my faith is based upon it also. I can also praise him while I'm going through the fire. Sometimes we have to have our own little praise party going on. I don't know about you, I'm in my car. A lot of times I have a headset in. They probably think I'm listening to my favorite song, which most of the case, it is my favorite praise and worship song. So whatever level you're at, you have to find out where your praise and worship is. Develop it. Not only that, when you develop it, God empowers it. He'll expand and expound upon it. And how many know that you can be embellished in your praise and worship and God will take it to another level? That's where God wants us to be at because God is great. The greater one is in me than the one that's in the world. So remember also whose we are. I'm kept by Jesus. I'm kept by the Father. I'm kept by the Son. I'm kept by the Holy Ghost. And in case you don't know it, this is our protection plan. That means it's a fivefold ministry working within me and I'm surrounded by his angels. We have to also remember prayer and fasting through the fire. I don't know about you, but I'm on my knees often, especially now with what we're going through because I know that there's somebody out there hurting. I know that there's a relative, there's a coworker, there's a friend, there's somebody who's incarcerated, there's someone in the hospital that needs our prayer. So we have to come together as believers in God. We rejoice through the testing. This is a testing period that we're going through. And as we go through this testing period, we're not to lose faith, we're not to lose hope. The greater one, who we serve, the God that I love, Jehovah Jireh. He's my God. He's my Savior. He's my Holy One. He's my all in all. I just began speaking the right words over myself, and I let them recycle through me as a, as a result of it. And I, the words keep recycling until something happens. We also have to expect a great ending. If you don't have an expectation, then there's no finish line for you to go towards. So, Expectation. Expect great things. Expect wonderful things concerning God. Don't look at what the world is doing. Keep your eyes on Jesus today. And finally, praise will always prevail in our lives. When I praise Him, something happens. When I raise my hand, something happens as a result. So I can praise Him freely. I can praise Him at my job and they don't know what I'm doing. They think I'm raising my hand for a question. But they just don't know. I'm praising the Lord. So develop your own means of praising Jesus, the God that we serve, the greater one who lives in me, who lives in you. So God can do great things. Stay in alignment with God through the fire. Prevail. God will do great things. I'm here to tell you for PRC. Thank you and God bless you. Forever 
Hi, good morning, and thank you for joining us once again at PRC. My name is Minister Jason Swazer, and this morning I'll be giving the tithes and offering. But before I get started, I want to encourage you a couple of different ways that you can give this morning. You can either give by mail, and if you're not sure what the mailing address is, you can actually message us here at PRC on Facebook, and we can get the mailing address to you. Also, you can go to PRC.org and click on the little donation button and then enter the dollar amount and they'll ask you some information about your name and credit card. Very safe way to give. It's a way that I also choose to give from time to time when I'm not able to make it a service. So let's go ahead and get started on the tithes and offering this morning. This morning, I'm going to be coming to you out of the New King James Version, Mark chapter 4 and verse 26. And then we're going to touch bases on Ecclesiastes chapter 11, 1 through 6. So if you have your Bibles, let's get ready. The kingdom of God. It's as if men should scatter seed on the ground and should sleep by night and rise by day. And the seed should sprout and grow and he himself does not know how. For the earth yields crops by itself, first the blade, then the head, and after that the full grain in the head. But when the grain ripens, immediately he puts in the sickle because the harvest has come. Again, the kingdom of heaven is as if, God, if man should scatter seed on the ground. Notice, seed should be scattered. This morning, I have a question for you. Which seed was it? Very good question. Which seed was it that opened the doors for you when you needed the doors open that were closed? What seed was it that gave you favor when you needed that favor? What seed was it that brought the blessing of the Lord upon you, upon your house, upon your community, upon your church? What seed was it that caused grace to abound for every good work? Again, which seed was it that gave you witty ideas and witty inventions? Another thought is, was it the seed sown in faith? Was it the seed sown in abundance? A lot of times it's easy to give out of abundance. Was it the seed sown in my trials? It's really challenging to give when you're down to your last, but you still must trust God. Was it the seed sown in my season of winter? Really hard to sow or even to plow the ground when it's hard and it's a winter season. Sometimes the work is hard, but we still got to sow into the kingdom. Was it the seed sown in obedience? We all know that obedience is better than sacrifice. So here in Ecclesiastes 11 in chapter 1, it says, Cast your bread upon the waters, for you will find it after many days. Give a serving to seven and also to eight, for you do not know what evil will be upon the earth. If the clouds are full of rain, they empty themselves again, they empty themselves upon the earth. And if a tree falls to the north or to the south, in the place where the tree falls, there it will lie. Verse four, he who observes the wind will not sow, and he who regards the clouds will not reap. Stop waiting for the perfect time in the perfect season. Verse five, as you do not know what is the way of the wind or how the bones grow in the womb of her who is with child, so you do not know the works of God who makes everything. Verse six is what I'm getting at. In the morning sow your seed, and in the evening, do not withhold your hand, for you do not know which will prosper, either this or that, or whether both the like will be good. Again, I ask you, what seed was it? Stop trying to pick and choose your seed and using your seed for ransom to get from God what you desire or to get from God at the time that you wanted. It is for an appointed time. It is for an appointed season. The seed knows what to do. The life, it is in the seed. And if we know if the life is in the seed, God has already designated when it's going to come up and what that seed is going to do for you, for your church, for your community. God is only asking you to release it. You cannot release it if your hand is closed. So I'm going to say a prayer for you this morning. Heavenly Father, I just thank you, Lord, once again for this time and opportunity of giving us the tithe and the sow and give into the kingdom, Father. Father, we don't know what seed, Father, brought the favor, which, which seed, Father, brought the blessing and which seed opened the door for Father in Jesus name. We know that it is you who supplies the seed to the sower and bread to the eater. Therefore, Father, I'm going to be thankful and thank you for what you have given us into our hands and into our life, Father, and I'm going to release it back unto you. In the name of Jesus, I thank you and I pray. Amen. Now let's continue watching the message from last week that Bishop Lewis was giving concerning praying in the spirit and praying in tongues. Praying in the spirit and praying in tongues is a very powerful and very important message for the body of believers. If Jesus sent the comforter, the Holy Spirit, for us to receive him, then I believe that it is something that we should have. Now today, as you hear the message today, consider in your heart, this is a gift that you really need. This is something that God has given us to be able to pray and communicate with him. So today, 
Listen in. I believe truly that you will be blessed and that you're going to have a great and awesome word this morning. And I want to tell you, most of the times in my life when I got to make a decision, I need God to understand me. I don't need man to understand me. There are times, I know some of you out there saying right now, I got a feeling. The old saints used to say it this way. They used to say it this way in church. And there's a song we sang that says, I got a feeling. Everything's going to be all right. Everything's going to be all right. Where'd you get that feeling from? The old saints was praying in tongues. They were praying in tongues and they got a feeling. The, the Lord of God gave them a, a, an emotional feeling that everything's going to be all right. They couldn't explain it. They c- what makes you think everything's going to be all right, brother? We're going through some tough times with, right, right now. What makes you think everything's going to be all right? I want you to explain. I want you to use your education to tell me everything's going to be all right. They said, no, 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 no. All I got is a feeling. All I got is an unction from the, Paul said, an unction from the Holy Spirit. And that's what Paul used to do one of his, his greatest tri- trials of faith when he, was, when he had to go and go to Rome. And he was, he, he was going to Rome to face Nero, to face the emperor, and the, the angel of the Lord came to him and told him, says, don't go on that trip. If, if, if that ship sails, it's going to be disastrous. Now, he got a, the angel has spoken to him and said, hey, th- this trip is going to end in disaster. Try to convince somebody not to even pull that ship out of port. Think about that. Now, Paul has to go to the jailer who's arrested him and tell the jailer, I perceive and the angel told me, this is a, to, to, to Paul, to the jailer, Paul is just another one of the prisoners. And to the jailer, when Paul says, an angel spoke to me and said, hey, don't pull this ship out. Only thing the jailer is thinking is, you're trying to put your trial off. You're trying to get more time and not go face these charges that are brought against you. And he, that's what, and the jailer's thinking, that's what I would expect someone like you to say. That's what, now, if the, if, if it had been the captain of the ship or one of the, the navigator of the ship or the engineer of the ship, I don't think they would need an engineer because they didn't have any engines during that time. But um, if one of them had came to the jailer and said, we should put this ship, put this trip off because there's going to be a storm coming, then the jailer probably would have fully listened to them because of their education and their experience. But now Paul, who has no experience as a sailor, is going out and trying to tell the jailer, this trip is going to end in disaster. And so he's end up having, he has to go on this trip anyway, knowing what's coming, knowing that disaster is on its way, because the angel has already told him. And when disaster comes, guess what happens? Paul says, he looks at everyone and says, I told y'all we should not have come on this trip. Now are y'all ready to believe? Now he's not being smart. He said, now are you ready to listen to me? And now the jailer was ready to listen to Paul because Paul had forewarned him of this disaster. And now that same thing, that the, the very thing that Paul warned him about is happening to them. And now Paul is praying in tongues. He says, look what Paul does. He doesn't say, I, I told y'all we shouldn't be on this trip. Now everybody gonna die. Now what Paul says is he says, I told you we shouldn't have come on this trip. You can read over in the book of Acts for yourself. I told you we shouldn't have come on this trip. But now an angel of the Lord visited me last night. And guess what he told me? He says, not one life is going to be lost. God is speaking to me all through this trial. And he's told me, the, the Lord's told me that, yes, the ship is going to be lost. The, the, uh, the substance, of all the uh, uh, material uh, uh, items on the ship is going to be lost. But not one life will be lost. And the only way that's going to happen is if you do listen to me, if you listen to me. And Paul is just praying in tongues. Paul is praying in tongues. Paul is this one who says, I speak in tongues more than all of you guys. He says, but, uh, but when I'm in church, I'm going to pray with my understanding so that everybody can understand what I'm saying. See, the Corinthians church, Paul was correcting the Corinthians church. Paul was not saying, do not speak in tongues, do not pray in tongues, do not sing in tongues. Even in church, he was not forbidding it in church. He was just saying, bring some order to what you're doing. He says, you're doing everything out of order. And he says, how is it when you come together, every one of you got a song? Everybody in the congregation got a song, and you won't even wait till the other person finishes before you start singing. You won't even wait till the other person, the other person, finishes praying before you start praying. 
You won't even wait till the other person finishes uh, uh, preaching before you start preaching. He said, no, 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 bring some order to it. He says, if you're going to pray in tongues do it, and, and, and prophesy in tongues in church, then make sure there's an interpreter. And if there's not an interpreter, then stop and be quiet. Stop and be quiet. Amen. That's order right there. But praying in tongues is for me personally. And I want you to get that. We need to be doing that right now. I would challenge every saint today, every saint that's hearing my voice today, when you get home today, spend at least five minutes today praying in tongues and say, Lord, and, and, and do it like this. Say, Lord, I, you see everything that's happening in our nation today. You see what's happening with the, with, with, with the um, leadership in our city. You see what's happening with the elections that's coming up. You see what's happening with um, this pandemic that we're going through. You see what's happening with the businesses that we work for. You see what's happening in our hospitals. You see everything that's happening, Lord. Now, Lord, I'm not going to prejudge who I should vote for. I'm not going to prejudge who you're getting ready to put on the throne next. I'm not going to prejudge any of that. But what I am going to do, Lord, is I'm going to pray. And I'm going to pray in the spirit. I'm going to pray in the spirit because, Lord, if I pray with my understanding... I'm not going to ask you for the right thing. I might ask you for some people to be killed. I might ask you for the, to destroy some people. You know, at one time when Paul was praying with his understanding, he was praying. He said, he said and Demas did me great harm. He says, I pray that the Lord reward him back harm for all of that. But see, but the God tells us that's not the way to pray. And when you're praying in tongues, you can't pray like that. Because if you're praying in tongues while you're praying for the Lord to kill him, the, the, the spirit of saying, Lord, bless him. The Spirit will speak for you. The Spirit will say, Lord, he don't mean that. Bless him. Bless him. Because the Bible tells us to bless our enemies. To bless our enemies. And the Spirit's going to pray the word of God. The Spirit is going to pray what the word of God says. Amen? So the, the Bible says in verse 2, in chapter 14, verse, one, verse 2, it says, For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men, but unto God. For no man understandeth him. Howbeit in the spirit he speaketh mysteries. In the, no man understands, but in the spirit I'm speaking the secret plans of God. I like that. I'm speaking into existence what God wants to do next. Amen? But he that prophesied, he that preacheth, speaketh unto men to edification. Yes, I, don't, I, I, wouldn't, I would not walk up to someone on the, speak, on the street and just start speaking in tongues to them because they'll just look at me and say, I don't understand a word you said, brother, and they wouldn't receive anything from me if I did that. It says, it, speak, it says but he that preaches speaketh unto men to edification and exhortation and comfort. Amen? He, verse 4, he that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifieth himself. How many of you need to be edified right now? How many says, boy, I'm just so down. Me and my wife know some things we be going through. We just be so down, but then we go pray, and we'll get by ourselves and just pray in tongues. And next thing you know, our, our whole attitude changes. Our whole attitude changes because I want to tell you something right now. You can't pray in tongues. <laughs> you can try if you want, but my wife will agree with me on that. You can try if you want to pray in tongues and still hate. You can't do it. You can try if you want to pray in tongues and still be mad, but you can't do it. <laughs> you can't do it. And you know why? Because the Lord is not trying to change my mind. He's trying to change my heart. He's not trying to change my mind because I'm going to tell you right now, God don't care what you think. <laughs> God does not care what you think. Matter of fact, the Bible says in the book of Isaiah, it says, uh, God, the Bible says, uh, the, the Lord speaking to Isaiah, he says, my thoughts are higher than your thoughts, and my ways are higher than your ways. Amen? My thoughts are higher than your thoughts, and my ways are higher than your ways. So God does not care what you think. But here, I'm going to tell you this. God cares about what you do. God cares about what you do. Not what you think, but what you do. All I had, Lord, I had some ungodly thoughts. That's okay. You didn't, you didn't follow up on them. That's okay. You did not follow up on what you was thinking. And see, whatever's in your heart, you'll follow up on. Whatever's in your heart, when you get the opportunity to do it, good or bad, you'll do it. 
good or bad, you will do it. Whatever in your heart. That's why you see people committing fornication today. Because it was already in their heart. I think it's James or, James or Peter that says, let no man say that when he is tempted that he was tempted to God because it says it first was in his own heart. It was in you to do it. Satan just made the opportunity for you to do it. Somehow, somewhere along the way, you express your desire to do that and Satan saw that it was in your heart and he said, let me give an opportunity to, to do it and he will do that. You will do what's in your heart. So when you're praying in a tongue, in unknown tongue, God is dealing with your heart. And when he deals with your heart, then it's hard for you to hate because God removes the hate out of your heart when you're praying in tongues. It's hard to pray in tongues and then walk away still hating someone. I'm going to tell you something. If you can pray in tongues and walk away still hating on people, then guess what? You got a hard heart. You got a hard heart and something else you got. You got a hard way to go. You got a hard way to go. Amen? He that speaking in the untongue, on the tongue edifies himself. But he that preaches edifies the church. Right now, I'm preaching to edify the church. Now, what if I just got up here and said, saints today, I'm just going to teach this whole message on, pray, on speaking in tongues by, in my heavenly language. And you would just, I guarantee you, you would turn me off so quick. You would turn me off after five minutes. Five, my, the first five minutes, you might be with me. Say, oh, that brother is really praying in tongues or speaking in tongues. But after five minutes of that, because it's not edifying you, you would change the channel. You would change the channel. So right now, I'm edifying the church. I'm edifying the church. When I go home, I'm going to edify myself. I'm going to edify myself. Amen? Me and my wife will get together sometimes and edify each other just by praying in tongues. And I pray in tongues more so ever than I pray in English, in my, in my English language. Because most of the time, I don't know what to pray. And I, and I just accept the Bible and the book of Romans says, for when I'm praying, I don't know what to pray. I don't know what I should be. When I think I know what to pray, I don't know what to pray. When I think I got it all together, I don't know what to pray. Right? It says, I would, Paul says, I would that ye all speak with tongues. I would, Paul said, I want everybody to speak with tongues. But rather that you preach, for greater is he that preacheth than he that speaketh with tongues. Except, come on now, except, there's an if there. Except he interpret that the church may receive edifying. If I'm going to speak in tongues in church, I need to pray for interpretation also. I don't want to just get there and speak in tongues just so I can say, I used to, when, 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 I, when I first got saved, one of the brothers that got me saved, who used to be in the Navy with, he would, he would just try to, he would record himself praying and speaking in tongues so that he could see, he could see how many different languages he was speaking in. I said, that, that just edifies you, brother. That's not edifying anybody else. Paul tells us, forget about that. That's just lifting you up and making you feel good. But he says, pray that you can interpret. Instead of trying to see just how many different languages you speak, I, I asked him one day, do, do you understand what you're saying? He said, no. Well, then that's a waste of time. Recording what you're saying is a waste of time unless you're recording it so that you can pray and get an understanding of what you're saying. It says, now, brethren, if I come to you speaking with tongues, what shall I profit you except I speak to you either by revelation, get this now, or knowledge, or by prophesying, or by doctrine. We're going to get into that a little later on in my, in my, in my teaching on the different ways of preaching. I, I call that the, the, different, the, what the four different ways of preaching, revelation, knowledge, prophesying, and doctrine. Four different ways of preaching, revelation, knowledge, prophesying or, pro or doctrine. And we know people that preach by revelation. We got people that preach just strictly by revelation. We know some of them. We got people that preach strictly by knowledge. They, they study everything and they'll lay everything out, line upon line. They got doctor's degrees in the word of God, amen? And then we know preachers that are just fired up, Holy Ghost filled preachers that just, they, you, they don't need the Bible to preach. Just give them, just give them one scripture. Give them one scripture, and all they need is one scripture, and they'll be preaching to you for two hours out of that one scripture, amen? And then you got people that preach by doctrine. I like being preached to personally by doctrine. I'm going to tell you why. I like being preached to by doctrine, and my, 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 I also do like being preached to by revelation. 
because I want to know what God wants to do next. But I love being preached to by doctrine because doctrine tells me how to change my life, how to fix what's broken in my life. Amen. I'm going to get ready to close here in a minute. But I want to turn over to the book of uh, 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 book of um, let's go to the book of Romans, Romans chapter eight. I'm pretty sure it is Romans chapter eight. And I want to I want to go back to that. And I want to talk to you about why we and the power of praying and speaking in tongues. Amen. We'll close with that. It says, Romans chapter 8, and I'm starting at verse 15 and read that one, right? It says, For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Amen? I, so if, you're, if, if, if fear is trying to grip you, start praying in tongues. Start speaking in tongues and speak, because speaking in tongues will, 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 will remove fear. Will, will remove fear, right? Verse 22 says, for we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. And not only they, but, our, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit. Even ourselves groan within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit the redemption of our body. For we are saved by hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For what man see if, why do he yet hope for it? But we hope for that which we see not, then if we hope for it, then we, then do we with patience wait for it? Look at somebody say, wait for it. Wait for it. If you're praying, the way to wait for it, pray in tongues. It'll strengthen you to wait. Amen? And it goes on to say, I'm going to close this, close with these scriptures. Likewise. Somebody say, likewise. Let me interpret that word because we don't use these kind of, we don't use King James in our language. So let me give you the interpreter of the word likewise. Just like this. Right, just add that to that. Instead of saying likewise, say, just like this, the Spirit also helps our infirmities. In some Bibles, it's our weaknesses. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought to. We don't know. Right now, all of this is going on, and everybody's asking me. Everybody's coming at, the, at me and Pastor Drusilla wanting, to, wanting answers from us. Answers that we just don't have. We just don't have. And we can't look at, saints, saints of God, we can't look at each other and start blaming each other. Well, if, and, and that's what, I, I was watching TV today and I was watching something on the candidates. They started blaming the president for everything. Corbin, they started blaming the president for the unemployment rate. I said, wait a minute, the president had nothing to do with that right now. COVID-19 had everything to do with that. So if you're blaming the wrong person. And only God has something to do with that. Only God can control that. What we're going through right now, only God can control. So guess what the Bible tells us? And we have to get this down. The Bible says we wrestle not against flesh and blood. So it's never flesh and blood. It's never flesh and blood. It's always the spirit behind what's going on through mankind. Amen? It says, for we know not what we should pray for as we are. But the spirit, the Holy Spirit, make it, it the Holy Spirit itself or himself make it intercessions for us with groanings that cannot be other so when you're praying in an unknown tongue the spirit is praying the spirit is praying amen and he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the holy spirit because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of god that's why i tell you i said when you pray in tongues you can't hate you can't hate when you pray in tongues because when you pray in tongues, the Holy Spirit will be praying to God, Lord, let's deal with that hate that's in him. Let's deal with that hate that's in him right now. Amen? It says, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. Amen? According to his purpose. See, because he's conforming me He's making me holy. As he is holy, I'm becoming holy. I want you to make that declaration today with me as we close. As he is holy, I'm becoming holy. Amen? For him who, who he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. I'm going to be one of the brethren. I don't know about you, but I'm going to be one of the brethren because as he is holy, he's making me holy, and he's doing it by working from the inside. The Old Testament saints, I'll close with this. The Old Testament saints used to sing that song, Jesus on the inside. 
working on the outside. <laughs> Jesus, Jesus is on the inside of me right now. I don't care about how I feel about what's going on around me today. Jesus is, I don't care what news I got today, good or bad. Jesus is on the inside of me, working on the outside. Oh, what a change in my life. Pray in tongues today and watch how God blesses you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Did you receive the word praying in tongues, praying in the spirit? And Bishop Kelsey Lewis challenged us to pray for five minutes in the spirit. Do you know, years ago, he asked us as a congregation to come down to the church and to pray in the Holy Ghost, pray in the spirit for about 30 minutes. And for some, that was a new thing. For others, it wasn't new. But our sometimes 30 minutes may seem long or 15 minutes or even as he said for five minutes i guarantee you will, you will not be the same i personally can testify as i began to pray in tongues more often we as pentecostals many of us get filled with the spirit but we don't continue praying in the spirit and using that power that god has given to us so i want to encourage you to seek after the holy spirit maybe you've been taught negative things about the holy spirit but we are living testimony Testimonies that the Holy Spirit and praying in the Spirit can make a difference for you and I. It will edify you, it will build you up, it will clarify things that you're asking God for. Do you know, I want to pray for you right now. If you desired the infilling of the Holy Spirit or you want to pray in the Holy Ghost uh, more often and more frequently, I can share with you that one of my relatives had called and asked about praying in the Holy Ghost and the person had been filled years ago but was not praying in the Holy Spirit and we were on the phone and that person was out of town and we were just I said you're going to get refilled again you're going to pray in the Spirit again and as we were praying the Lord filled that person again with the Holy Spirit if you haven't prayed in tongues in a long time and you feel dry this is your time this is your season the Holy Spirit is nothing to be afraid of he is a gentleman and he's gentle and he will speak your language. You don't have to worry about running down around the room and around the house and getting emotional. The Holy Spirit is inside of you and dwells inside of you. I want to pray for you to be filled and to pray more frequently in the Holy Spirit. I also want to pray for God's healing, God's deliverance and God's provision for your life. So Father, in the name of Jesus, that person that's listening right now, we pray that you would fill them. You said, ask and it shall be given, seek and ye shall find. There's someone that's asking to be filled or refilled and they're crying out to you. There are some situations that have come up that they don't have the answers to and they, they need the answers to and they need the Holy Spirit to refresh them, to keep them going. There's a pastor that's thinking about, I, I just going to shut it down. There's a business person. There's a mom. There's someone that's praying that say, I don't know what to pray, but they know they need to to pray lord i ask you to fill them and speak through them as they begin to praise and worship you and give you glory and honor i ask you to fill them allow them to speak in their heavenly language you said you would not withhold anything good from us and we know that the holy spirit is a wonderful gift so we ask you to fill them and refill them in the name of jesus and lord there are some financial situations that we're praying for that you would just intervene right now there is nothing too hard for you, nothing impossible for you. you pr your promises are true. You're not man that you should lie or can lie. So we thank you for every provision. I thank you that we touch and agree in prayer for healing of physical infirmities right now. Lord, we thank you for a good report from the doctor. As some are going to the doctor this week, we thank you for an excellent report. And even if it's not the greatest report, we know that you are our healer in the name of Jesus. We walk by faith and not by sight. Again, we thank you for our family members that are coming to you. We thank you for the generations that are coming to you and more powerful as ever before through the power of the Holy Ghost. We thank you for this in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, amen and amen. Now I want to encourage you, if you'd like us to pray with you, we encourage you to call the number on your screen, call our church office. And if uh, we don't answer right away, we will call you back and we will pray for you to be filled with the Holy Spirit. We know that we may not necessarily be able to come to you, but our faith is strong enough for you to speak in tongues as God God desires that we all do. Amen. 
There are the gift of tongues, but there's also the praying in tongues, praying in the spirit to edify our spirit man and our hearts and our mind. So we encourage you right now. Thank you for joining us at Pacific Revival Center. We are believing and continuing confess revival in the land because we know that God is coming soon. Thank you again for joining us. Write us, email us, and we'd love for you to contribute to the ministry. We are upgrading our equipment so that we can better come to you, better cameras, better sound. We want everything to be excellent just for you. We are on the move. We're excited about getting the gospel out to all nations. Our vision is to train, equip, and send out armies of believers to minister the gospel to all nations. And we're ready to do it. And we hope you're ready as well as we quit, equip you to do the work of the ministry. God bless you. Have a great week in the Lord. Aloha.